tell me that you can't be here in the daytime. Is that right? How many? One, two, three. Cannot. All right. Then there will be some other folks who may be here at night who aren't here today. Is that correct? Well, I would, I would like to propose this. Let's today try and complete our overview of the whole book. This is not our detailed discussion. So that anybody who can't be here in the daytime during the balance of the week has a feel for what we're doing, right? Right. Is that fair enough? Including tonight. Including tonight. Tonight we won't throw it open to general discussion. <coughs> the sat uh, this morning, this afternoon, and this evening, we will try and cover that first page of the structure of the book. The brief look-see at the whole thing. Mornings and afternoons, I would like to take the lead. Uh, this is not a monologue. You folks got questions, fire them fast. But I would like to stay with this story. Evenings, I'd like to throw it open for a free-for-all discussion. And here's the experience that I've had in Connecticut, where I've got a, uh, a group budding. This is my own seed I planted. I'll take, if I ever get a society out there, why, I'll be proud. Dallas, where we get around Oklahoma City. Uh, people always say, gee, you know, I forgot to ask these uh, 42 questions that have been bothering me. What would you say we do this? If you've got questions, could you put them one question each on a three by five card? Could that be done? Would it be asking too much? No. I'll tell you what it would help me to do. I could, I could shuffle the cards, you know? And so 18 people have asked, please be sure to discuss personality. And uh, all right. I've got only one question there instead of 18. Or there are six questions that are related and can the whole story can be developed, one leading into another. If you can't get cards, don't worry, I can cut them up. But if you could put them on three by five cards, it would just help me in my clerical work. Like those, Bill, I have some. Yeah, like these. This is grand. This is very grand. Here are a pile of cards if anybody wants some for questions. Sure. I think I have some, too. I'll come up to them. I'll, and I'll keep you, them here on the piano. Uh -huh. And this them. doesn't mean that you don't bust in and, 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 and ask any question you want any time you want. But I think we'll cover more territory. We'll spin our wheels less if we introduce a certain minimum amount of organization. Does it appeal to you all to work that way? I can't open it. Good. I want to put some on here. I can't open it, Paul. There's one question that's been asked me. And I'd like to take it up. Um, how much can be said about the origin of the book? Is it breaking the oath to tell of early stories about the book? The Contact Man, the Redwood Tree section. Is it permissible to tell who was on those early committees? Many of us are at a loss just where to stop when talking about the book and its origin. For example, many details are printed in the appendix in anyone. It's a real adventure story, isn't it? Just think, that night he walked into Ardenon's salivary glands and taste buds for the first time, and he tasted food. And it seems to me that his gospel was, God is a being you can trust. He's a just and moral God. Because until you trust God, you don't have any foundation on which Michael could point to the fact that God is a loving Father. And I think there's a great deal we can learn in the story of his missionaries. For example, when you divert spiritual energy to accomplish even desirable social end, this kind of energy, and can pervert the spiritual purpose of a mission. Can you think of any more desirable social objective than to eliminate temple prostitution? This was a then acceptable practice. 
And you'll recall the Melchizedek missionaries in Mesopotamia embarked upon this venture. And that result, not the elimination of temple prostitution, but the collapse of the Melchizedek missionary venture in Mesopotamia. And Melchizedek never commissioned his followers to go out and stamp out prostitution, did he? Jesus never commissioned his followers to go out and insist on monogamy, but Abner did. Net result, Mohammedanism, which teaches polygamy. That's the nearest mention they make of Protestantism in the book. Yes. That's right. Protestantism and Sikhism are the last religious developments that they touch upon lightly. And they're roughly contemporary in time. Are we with it yet? It's all right, thank you. No, all right. Fine. Thanks, Paul. That's fine, thanks. See the lights on. They were too venal. They were a little too corrupt. And this, what might have been the grand legislature of Christendom, gave way to the autocracy of papal authority. And the Protestant, well, a hundred years later, ended the wars of religion. And as I read the story of that Congress, my heart is broken at the venality of human nature. Bill, true. Uh, you talked about uh, Peter and Paul being good organizers. Uh, I thought about that quite Especially a bit. Paul. Yeah. I feel, in my, this is my opinion, of course, that because of their uh, wonderful ability to organize, that they somewhere lost the concept of what they were organizing, and this did more to hurt and things than later. At least, it, at least it survived in some form. Well, what survived? <coughs> the uh, perversion of Jesus' teachings. Yeah. And maybe it had to be perverted to survive. I don't know. I don't know. But I think it's very important that we study these things. Because Arnold Toynbee says, and truly, those who know not history are doomed to relive it. And what I pray is that the Arantia Brotherhood make new and original mistakes. We do not have to repeat the mistakes of our predecessors. And therefore we should know about their errors. Not to sneer at them, but to learn from them. When I look at my service record, up there. Hope I get a chance to bootleg a look at it someday. Mm -hmm. The most wonderful inscription I could ever see there is, he made new and original mistakes. You mean on the higher tribunal? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And this would be, this would be, I would take, for whoppers. I would take that, I would take that as a summa cum laude. Let's have a coffee break, what do you say? In church about once a month, but I'm there to give a talk, to bootleg, you know. Uh, I think in reality is the story of how things got started, and universe levels of reality is the story of where they're going to. So you have the present, the past, and the future of reality. I think we'll have a little fun with those three papers. They really aren't very hard. When you get down and look at them, you know, with the whites of their eyes. They're hard only because we tend to make them hard. And because we say, gee, they're talking about real abstract concepts, and, and, and this is a long time ago, and, and they're talking about the derivation of the absolutes and the segmentation of the I am, and and actually, I think we can symbolize that.